Hello guys and welcome back to Phil's Corner. Euro's fever is officially upon us. In fact, by the time you're watching this, it will be the day of the Euros. The Euros kicks off tonight, so I am really excited about that because of course, alongside the back-to-back -back days of football, watching games during the day, and the excitement of knockout football, we have some great kits to enjoy. And I thought, since uh, we had quite a fun video uh, doing a tier list for the leaks for the Euros recently, I wanted to follow up and do a full comprehensive breakdown of every kit from each team at the Euros this year. So we have got nearly 50 kits to place on a tier list, which we will do. We'll talk about them. I'll give my expert opinion and my hot takes. There will probably be a few things that you disagree with, so do uh, enjoy the video and let me know, of course, as we get into this, what you like, what you dislike about my choices. I don't think there's too much to say at the intro other than if you are new to the channel, maybe you've stumbled across this video um, as you've been searching for Euros content. Well, we are a channel all about football shirts and if you like this video and you like football shirts, why not subscribe? Subscribe to this channel to get some good football shirt content at your doorstep. We also do regular live streams here where we review new shirts, where we shop on eBay for vintage bargains. So there's lots of good stuff. Being a subscriber means you're a part of that journey. And if you want to go an extra step further, I have a Patreon where there are a good range of benefits. You get access to monthly giveaways. You get a shirt as part of your support. There's a community where you can be a part of uh, swapping shirts, selling shirts, buying shirts for people to send around the world, that sort of thing. Uh, but all the details are at the link in the description. So let's get to our tier list. I'll just switch scenes now for us. And you can see here, this is our uh, empty tier list so far. We've got all the shirts down here at the bottom. Uh, my favorite shirts, of course, in the S tier. My least favorite in the D tier, but we'll go through all of the kits and place them one by one. Uh, I grabbed the first kind of list I found online, so you can ignore the ads around here, but we'll start with one of my favorites, guys, the Netherlands away shirt. Now, many of you know, I enjoy a good bus seat shirt. This is the quintessential bus seat shirt. By that, I mean a shirt which looks like it could feature as a bus seat or a public transport seat. And this very much falls into that category. I think it's not just the bus pattern though. I do like the choice going for the dark blue for the Dutch. It certainly reminds me a bit of that Van Persie header. And I think the only thing really I'd like to change, I wouldn't mind seeing the swoosh perhaps in the light blue, uh, just to kind of match the crest. But I really like this one. It definitely plays to my, uh, yeah, my preferences in the shirt world. And honestly, guys, I don't think I can put this anywhere other than S tier. I really do like it. I'm looking forward. I'm hoping we'll see it on the pitch. Uh, of course, one of the things we have to say is that sometimes in major tournaments, teams only really wear their home shirts, especially if they don't go further in the groups, uh, depending on matchups. But hopefully we do get to see this one. I really, really like it. Uh, that has to be in the S tier for me. But then if we scroll down, this is the absolute contrast to the Dutch shirt. Now... Croatia shirts are always ones that people look forward to and I would say that typically in most years they are some of the best in international football but unfortunately Nike I think have fumbled the bag here I do not think this is a good Croatia shirt and I'll tell you why I think quite simply we've lost the essence of what makes a good Croatia shirt here it's that checkerboard it's those checks those squares and I appreciate the creativity to do something different. Of course, when you're creating shirts every couple of years, there's only so many ways you can do a Croatia home shirt, but I think this is the worst Croatia home shirt in a long, long time, maybe even ever. I think this is a huge disappointment. And we started with an S-tier shirt, but as we come to the next kit, uh, this is an easy inclusion in the D tier. Now, when I look here again, at the contrast between the Dutch shirt, it really is chalk and cheese. Love the Dutch away, really, really don't like the Croatia home shirt. Like, you know, where are the checks perhaps on the sleeves as well that could help? Um, yeah, I mean, just the big checks. I don't like it at all. A huge disappointment, and that is an easy 
uh, option for me at the foot of the table. So we've started with uh, the good and the bad. Do we have the ugly? Well, we don't because we have the France home shirt. This is another kit which I really like. Now, it's interesting. We started with the trio of Nike shirts, of course. And one thing to look out for as we go through these kits is the collars. Uh, a lot of the Nike collars this year are a little bit uh, disappointing. But this is one of the better ones here. It's a bit strange to me the way it kind of tapers on one side, but I do like getting that flag detail in there. Anytime you see a flag detail, it's typically quite a strong move for me. But there's lots more to this than just the collar. The oversized crest is a really nice touch. It's a very retro touch. Not in back to France kits of the 80s, but I do like it. And the execution, the style of the crest as well is really strong. I like this shade of blue as well. It must be said that particularly with home shirts, we're looking to things like the colors, the shades, of those colors that we expect. And I like this more kind of true blue as opposed to the darker blue, which Nike have favored over the years with France. So this one is another really strong one for me. And I think I'll put this at the very top of the A tier. Uh, of course, as we're going through these kits, as we're looking through these designs, um, pay attention as well to my ordering on the tier list. So I think generally speaking, I'll put uh, my preferred shirts or the higher shirts in each tier towards the left, if that's not confusing, uh, and my least favorites on the right. So this one I would expect to end up pretty high on the A tier, but we'll see as we go through. That is the France home shirt in the A tier. Scrolling down, we have our first Puma shirt of the day, uh, courtesy of Austria. Now Puma, a little bit disappointing this year. It must be said that um, of the big three, Nike, Adidas and Puma. I think Puma are certainly lagging behind. The construction of their shirts feels quite uninspiring. There's very little innovation there. From a pattern perspective as well, um, we have a number of really forgettable designs. This is actually one of the slightly stronger Puma home shirts, if you can believe that. Uh, though the pattern does look quite unusual, quite random, um, I think ultimately it doesn't really add a lot in terms of the overall aesthetic. We have quite a refined clean look but this pattern I don't think it really lends itself particularly well to this style um, I would be much more interested to maybe see this pattern on the sleeves of the kit and maybe with a bit more contrast um, I think that could add a lot more you see this in a lot of home shirts where you have a quite a subliminal tonal pattern but I don't think uh, this works particularly well uh, and you know I don't ultimately think the end product is that exciting However, I would probably put it above the Croatia shirts. As we're looking here, I think this is somewhere between C and uh, B, but I think we will go for C. I don't, uh, I don't think it will end up particularly high in the C tier either uh, when all is said and done. And I think a lot of Puma shirts are probably going to end up here, uh, but we'll see as we go along if that is the case. Continuing on, because we have a lot of kits to go through. We don't want to waste too much time. Uh, and anyone who knows me knows I could probably... Uh, give you a 10 minute essay, uh, video essay on each kit, but um, we will move to Spain. Now we talked about Puma, but Adidas I think are probably the strongest of the big three. And I do like a lot of Nike's kits, but Adidas have really knocked it out of the park, I would say, in 2024. Their new template is really versatile. It allows for a lot of customization options, which really give uh, nice little things to look out for in each kit. Some kits you see patterns uh, in this section of the shirt here. Uh, what I've previously described as the Team Geist-esque uh, panels. Some are patterns on the side, some of course in the body, and I really like this Spain shirt. Um, keeping the shirt to just two colours is an interesting choice. Um, of course many kits will have like a third colour, a tertiary colour, but I don't mind the two colour look. And I do think this pattern in the body is much more successful than something like the Austria shirt which we talked about. This to me, um, it's not really clear what it is, it almost looks like a kind of uh, like a sand pattern, like a dune pattern, or maybe it's kind of like a forest. I don't really know exactly what is going on there. It's quite abstract, but I do think it adds a really nice uh, aesthetic to the shirt. It gives it a bit of an unusual, almost like a shimmer. And I think this is a really successful home shirt. In fact, I would go as far as to say this is in the Ata. I really do like it. I'd probably take it below the front shirt. So we'll stick it here, but I do think uh, this is one of the better home shirts of the tournament and this is typical adidas guys there's going to be many more adidas kits higher up the board uh, but a good start here for the three stripes and spain and there is more to come as i say dropping back down 
to Serbia. Now, unfortunately, this kit uh, is an example of how a pattern actually can take away from a shirt. And it's really good to have this after the Spain shirt because we have two similar styles of pattern. A pattern which is more abstract, uh, more kind of textural. It's part of the body of the shirt here, again, like the Spain shirt. But unlike the Spain shirt, where the pattern actually elevates the overall design, I think in this case for Serbia, the pattern leaves the shirt feeling quite muddy, uh, almost kind of dirty. It doesn't really add a lot to it. It doesn't help that this shade of red is quite tired in comparison to the vibrant Spanish shirt. There's nothing in the way of patterns or details on the collar or the cuffs. And ultimately, I'm left very, very disappointed by this. I think this one simply has to be in the D tier. And honestly, I would put it below the Croatia shirt. Not a fan of this one at all. Uh, again, Puma have largely disappointed. There are one or two reasonable shares, but this is one of the worst ones for me. Now, it's not all good for Nike, and we come to the Turkey away shirt. Now, with Turkey, it's a similar story across both home and away kits. There is almost nothing to be excited about. This looks like it could have come out any time in the last four or five years, uh, if not more. It really is that uninspiring. The funny thing is though, as much as I don't like it, I probably would take it over um, uh, over the Croatia and the Serbia shirt. So if I just do a bit of a, a bit of a shift, we'll get Turkey in. It's still gonna be in the detail, don't get me wrong. I'm not uh, excited by it at all. I should add that of course, because we're not reviewing them with numbers, many of these kits will look a lot better with a bespoke name set or even just any uh, name and number set. This one is crying out for absolutely anything to add to it but it is far too simple, far too plain. If you're gonna do a simple kit like this, you need to have attention to detail, nice little call outs in the kit, perhaps a fabric a construction or a jacquard to give a plain shirt a bit of interest. And we actually will see that on a couple of other home shirts. This is just far too uninspiring. Moving to Poland, it's not much better for them. And in fact, uh, this has, you can't see very clearly on this picture, but this has one of the, uh, the quite disappointing uh, wrap over collars. Uh, I do prefer the centralized look and we've seen this for Poland for quite a few times before but I do actually think it's quite a good look for the team. That crest is very strong and it suits a centralized position. So even though I don't really like this collar I would definitely say this is a step above our D tier shirts here. I think I would even put it above Austria. Not by much but I will stick it just above there uh, in our fourth tier, the C tier. Nothing special for Poland, but it does land in C. And then we come to Hungary. Now this is actually one of the more standard Adidas shirts from the tournament, from the Euros. But the thing is the floor for Adidas shirts, I would say, is quite high. I do like this template. And again, this is one of the least exciting ones. So it's not gonna place too highly today. So this one I think is actually a kind of high C tier. In fact, I probably would take this over Poland. It is close. But yeah, ultimately, I think I like it here. Uh, and I will stick it at the top so far of our C tier. No pattern in the body kind of caps the ceiling. But again, even some of the weaker Adidas shirts are actually going to be better for me than some of the other brand efforts. We come to Turkey, and we already spoke about them, of course. This has that collar, which we don't like. And this one lands actually worse than the similar Poland shirt for me. I would actually put this in the D tier, quite simply because this is almost exactly the same as the past two Turkey home shirts, or maybe even three shirts. I can't remember how many it's been, but we've seen this horizontal sash style. In isolation, this shirt is pretty reasonable, minus the collar for me, despite it being quite boring, but because it's so similar to previous efforts, this one's gonna be pretty low down. In fact, I would probably put it, I mean, let's stick it in the top of the D tier. Uh, yeah, that is, Turkey and that is a bad one-two punch for Turkey there. They are quite simply one of the worst teams of the years for kits. Moving to Spain away. Now this one was one of the most difficult to evaluate uh, during the leak season and again apologies for the quality of these images here they're not really that great and actually this one has grown on me. The colour is very unusual it's a very uh, very unorthodox colour choice but I do think this one actually contrasts the home shirt quite well. And though it's not one of my favorites of the year, I actually do think, again, see more pictures of the details and areas of the kit, it's actually risen in my estimations enough that I would be comfortable putting it in the B tier. Our first B tier uh, shirt of the tier list so far. 
again, a key thing when we're looking at away shirts is how do they compare to the home? Are they providing something different? Are they maybe uh, offering something a bit more uh, which the home shirt doesn't offer? And I think this one, because it is a slightly more unusual color choice, is immediately uh, off to a good start. I think it's nice to pair a traditional or slightly more traditional home with a more progressive away or vice versa. And I think this one does that well. And the color combination, it does take a bit of while to get used to, but I do actually think it works pretty effectively. So that one is in our B tier. Not a bad combo. Of course, now we have both Spain shirts here, A and B, and that feels about right. There are teams that I prefer, but ultimately uh, the team are with Adidas at a good time for the brand. Now we have both Slovakia shirts here. Some of the least interesting, and it's quite notable that this is actually in the previous generation uh, of templates. Uh, the very heavily Total 90 inspired uh, template, which we've been seeing now for a couple of years in both club and international football. Of all the iterations or the versions of this template, this is actually one of my preferred, if not my favorite version, uh, what I've affectionately called the bat wings at the top here in a contrasting color. I think when you see this combination, this style, I think this particular version of this template is the best. So even though this is, again, quite dated, this is about as good as it's gonna get in this generation of templates for Slovakia. So it is very simple, but I do like, again, this version of a template. So much so that I would actually put this at the top of my C tier. So again, we're placing above some reasonable shirts here, uh, the likes of Hungary and Poland. But I do like Slovakia uh, enough to put them in the C tier. Despite being an old template, things could have been much worse. And indeed, with the away, this is quite boring. This is quite underwhelming. Though, of course, the construction is the same because we don't have that contrasting element on the kit. Uh, this one does land a lot lower. It's not my least favourite of the Euros, though it is very, very boring. And I think that is going to be a theme of uh, most of these kits in the D tier. Coming to another Puma shirt, we have the Czech Republic home. Now, though Puma have attempted a bit of a interesting pattern here in the body, I don't think this is very successful. I don't like this particular style of pattern very much at all. It feels very cheap to me, very rushed. Then it looks like they've essentially taken that crest and just repeated it. I don't think the end aesthetic is very strong. I think this is even weaker than, say, the Austria shirt. And when I look at it here, uh, compared to the D tier shirts, I think it's barely even pushing above uh, Croatia. In fact, I would actually take it behind the two Turkey shirts. But it's just that Puma template as well, guys. Looking at that template, it really is uninspired. And by that, I mean the construction of the shirt, the panels, the areas of the kit, which have things like patterns or just the makeup of the kit. It's really, really not working for me. It feels very dated. So that is the Czech Republic home quite low there in the D tier. And we come to the away. This is hardly much better. It is staggering that a major nation like the Czech Republic at a major tournament like the Euros are lumped with a kit like this. And the detail is really starting to fill up now. Um, yeah, I think I'd probably take it over the home, which is not exactly high praise. And I think the way this list that I've pulled up is ordered is it's broadly speaking getting better as we go along. At least I hope it is, because it has been a bad start. Will we see a comeback? I really hope we will. And you know what? As if by magic, we will now see one of the better shirts of the tournament. I have so much to say about the Belgium home and away kits. In fact, this particular shirt, the Belgium home, is easily one of my favorites. I really love this one. And uh, from when we saw the leaks through to now today on the eve of the tournament, I am absolutely in love with the design. I really think it's strong. That pattern, that geometric pattern, which is uh, part of the fabric is absolutely textbook. And I think this darker shade, this maroon shade is really strong too. Uh, it's a bold choice to have this color and to pair it with the black and the gold. And it feels quite kind of decadent. I think the whole aesthetic of the kit uh, really fits uh, the Belgian team quite nicely. It's simple things like having the crown uh, motif across the kit. And of course, it's part of the, uh, the recently rebranded crest. Um, that feels at home with these colors, with that pattern. Uh, so Adidas have absolutely smashed this one out of the park. In fact, very happy to put this one at the top of the tree so far. So it's going to usurp the uh, the Netherlands away and Belgium home. 
Um, will there be a better kit? Maybe only one or two kits I think have a shot at being better for me personally. Love this one and I hope Belgium do well simply because we'll get to see more of their kits. I really do think it is one of the best kits uh, on the international scene and one of the best Belgian kits of all time. That's how much I like it. Lovely, lovely stuff. Coming to Hungary, uh, it's great to see uh, this Adidas template used in this particular way where you have uh, a flag detail, three colors on that Team Geist slither panel, whatever you want to call it. So this one actually really is a step up on the home and I didn't really mind the home at all. In fact, when I look at this Hungary shirt, I think this is easily at the very top of the B tier and with an outside shout uh, sneaking into the A tier, but I will stick it in B for now. Um, I won't rule out any last minute changes, perhaps if uh, if the tier list gets full at one level we might do some rejigging, but for now I'm going away in B. And again, I think this is a great use of the template. Just seeing simple things guys, like the fact that in this version you see here you've got the red three stripes, but the green section here, are there any of shirts? The three stripes match that section of the panel and there's other ones again, I'll just find one more. Um, yeah, you can see here again you've got uh, the Spain away which is much more muted having the uh, the same as the base color here and then the uh, the light blue three stripes so there's just great ways to keep a template interesting and this is the key guys when you have a base style you need to be able to create variation it helps keep shirts relatively fresh and it's a very simple thing but it separates a good template from a bad one and for the big brands I think Adidas have done that the best so really like the hungry away uh, as I say very close to the A tier, but we'll keep it in B. Coming to Switzerland home, this one's disappointed me quite a bit. Uh, I'm unsure about the patterns, firstly. I don't know what this is supposed to be. It really looks to me like barbed wire. In fact, I can see here they've even written barbed wire pattern. I don't think that's what it's supposed to be, or maybe it is, I don't know, but I don't really think the aesthetic is very strong. Uh, if you're gonna do like kind of pinstripes like this, I'd probably rather just see them in white, as boring as that might be. Um, and also the contrast between the base of the shirt and the uh, the dark red. Not really feeling that too much. Ultimately, I think this is a bit of a miss, but I will say that this is at least uh, attempted a bit more than some of the other kits we've seen. Um, I'll probably take it below Austria, but we will go for C tier for the Switzerland home. Uh, again, though I don't really like the overall aesthetic, I would certainly take it over this couple of kits in the D tier, but not too much more to say about that one. Coming to Ukraine, uh, this is a shirt from the Spanish brand Homa, and uh, looking at the uh, home shirt here uh, and the away, I believe it's the same pattern. Uh, you've got the outline of the country here, uh, which is a bit cheesy. You know, we see this on a lot of international kits, but I don't mind it. It's something at least in the body of the kit. Um, it is actually pretty strong. I do think that you've got, again, a nice set of collar and cuffs, uh, some of the better uh, at the tournament. And I don't mind having the centralized federation crest there. Um, yeah, and I think looking at the home and the away, I prefer the yellow, I prefer the home. Um, it could just be these images that I've got in front of me. But actually, the slightly more subliminal nature, the subtle nature of the map on the home, I think is what's working for me, as opposed to the away, where it's a bit more obvious, a bit more literal. So looking at the uh, placement on the tier list, I think I'd happily put the Ukraine home in the B tier. I do like it, whereas the away is much more uh, like the C tier for me. I would probably take it over, uh, probably the Poland shirt. I think it feels uh, in a good spot there for me. So we'll stick it there. But now we come to Italy, and I love this Sicily away shirt. For me, this hits on a lot of really strong notes. Seeing the asymmetry look with green on one side and red on the other side is absolutely brilliant. I like that approach. And even having the blue as well, of course, again, we've got quite a few colors here, but I think because the base of the shirt is white, it allows for those splashes of color with the flag colors and of course, the Azuri blue. So I like the balance. I like the use, again, of the asymmetry. There is also a subliminal pattern, which you do see on the home as well. But this is an absolute triumph for me. And looking at the tier list, I think the main question now is, do I put it in S or A? Um, I think I'll stick it at the top of A. I like it even more than these two shirts here. And again, it's not far from the very top tier in my personal rankings. Coming now to the Scotland shirt, this one hasn't quite landed well for me. 
Uh, and you're just kind of throwing this pattern in here, but I think this is less successful than something like the Dutch Away, for example, which is a bit different, but I do think it's broadly similar. In terms of having this kind of patchwork style, this kind of bus seat style, now this is of course different, it certainly uh, evokes tartan as well in some way, but I think I want to see some other flecks of colour in here just to kind of lift it, a bit like we had with the Dutch shirt. Uh, that would certainly improve it for me. It's reasonably strong, but I don't think I quite like this one as much as uh, many other people. In fact, I would probably put this one at the bottom of the B tier. Again, good to see a bespoke pattern, but it doesn't quite land as well for me. So we'll stick it at the bottom of B. Coming now to Slovenia, it's a real shame actually that Slovenia have had a bit of a fall from grace. For many, many years, they were uh, one of the best teams. Uh, kind of a bit of a hipster's choice for international kits. They certainly had many good ones in the, uh, the noughties and the tens. This is one of the least exciting Serena shirts I've had in a long time though. I believe when the team have worn this recently, they've actually worn it with um, a version of this kit, I should say, with this element of the pattern at the top as well, this central stripe, which improved the look. But taking this in, this is definitely one of the more disappointing uh, looks of the year. Again, especially given the pedigree of the nation, uh, I probably would even put it in detail. And actually, when we come now to the away, like we talked about with Slovakia, this is my preferred version of the template, which just about keeps this one, only just uh, from the D tier. I'd stick it in between these two Puma shirts here. So it's not exactly high praise, but I do think this is again, the superior version of this generation of Nike shirts, uh, despite really lagging behind the best of the tournament. Poland away, I think actually has something about it. Uh, this kind of pattern which feels a bit like you know when we talked about the spain shirt almost kind of textual almost has like a gradient feel to it um and it's not the most successful pattern i would say of all the shirts but i do think this is actually broadly speaking quite nice i do think it adds to the kit unlike some of the patterns we've talked about i'd be very happy putting this one in the beta now as we come to switzerland i think we're starting to see a little bit more from puma i do think the color uh, combination here is a bit stronger I don't mind seeing these kind of steely, almost grey blues. Uh, and this lighter blue shade here, I think is actually particularly good. The pattern, very hard to see, very subliminal. It could just be the image I've got here, but it's definitely uh, added something to the base of the shirt. Uh, ultimately, I think the Puma construction again is just really hurting these kits. But I do think this one has a shot. Uh, certainly avoiding the D tier. I think I'd probably put it in the C tier. And the story continues with Croatia. Now I really didn't like the Croatia home shirt, it's one of my least favourites of the tournament. The away shirt is more successful. Uh, it's an interesting idea having these kind of red uh, lines almost kind of bursting out between the checkerboard. And I'm happy to see things like checks on the sleeves, even though it is a bit mismatched, it's hard to do that to be fair to them. I think I'd like a bit more of the red honestly, I think I'd like to see a little bit more uh, not that we need it on every line, but I think that is actually quite a strong element, uh, adding that in combination with the tonal blue look. Ultimately, as well, just having the checks at all as opposed to the home where they're so large, they're barely even checks. Uh, this is much more successful than the home shirt. So looking at our tier list, I think I'd actually go as far as to put this just below Hungary. And I think we're over halfway now, which is good. So we are starting to kind of get a bit of a picture but there are many more shirts to come. We come now to the Netherlands home shirt. Now I talked previously about how jacquard patterns, patterns in the fabric can really add to a kit. And this is an example where Nike have done a lot of good work in the area of technology, in the area of fabric construction. Though there isn't really a pattern per se, it's not kind of forming the head of a line or something like we've seen with previous Dutch kits. I do really like the drive for ADV, the technology. Uh, the kind of body mapping, the construction, the fabric itself uh, is doing a lot. So despite being effectively quite a plain shirt, I think this one easily slots into my A tier. This is one of my favorite home shirts and the Dutch have it very good with uh, the S and A tier represented across both kits. We come to Denmark, the sole uh, representatives for the brand Hummel. And I like both the Danish kits this year. We've got a really good pattern. We talked about jacquards just now. Well, that is the case uh, with this kind of pixelated pattern. Not my favorite aesthetic. I think it's a little bit, uh, a little bit cliche, but it does add a lot. And the reason jacquard patterns are so successful is that they have that kind of wonderful, shiny, 
retro feel to them and when the light hits different areas of the kit uh, it kind of bounces off that jacquard so this is actually quite strong we have of course the collar and this is one of the better collars of the tournament if you're a big fan of collars on shirts well this is the shirt for you looking at our tier list it's hard to play this one for me i think i would probably land in the b tier but i would stick it pretty high up in fact i think i'm going to go as high as the top of the b tier good to see Hamill on the board and a very respectable place uh, at the top of b coming out to england our first english kit to review just taking the shirt in in isolation it feels kind of disparate to me if there's a few different ideas here you've got this kind of sleeve uh, cuff combination with the colors here ultimately this collar and we talked about this already but this is my least favorite collar uh, perhaps in the tournament I really don't like it I don't like the aesthetic I don't like the way it looks on the players to be perfectly honest and we don't have uh, anything in the way of a strong pattern like we do uh, on some another Dutch shirt again that fabric pattern that jacquard really elevating the plain kit so this one actually is pretty underwhelming I would actually put this quite far down in my tier list in fact I don't think it's out of place in the C tier and I'm actually going to stick it just above Slovenia that's quite a lowly position for England Nike and England have been a great partnership in fact I would say uh, broadly speaking across the men's and women's kits Nike and England have, have been easy one of the best partnerships in international football the home shirt really doesn't land well though for me so a lowly position in C tier but what about Belgium uh, back to a high note we have the Tintin kit and as soon as we saw leaks pictures of this people got excited it's really funny seeing this especially with the brown shorts uh, they certainly nailed the brief with this one uh, trying to place this on the tier list though I do think I would probably put it uh, a step down from the home shirt in fact I probably would put it quite low in the A tier so it's still a very good position but certainly the novelty factor is uh, doing a lot of heavy lifting nonetheless we'll stick Belgium at the bottom of the A tier it's still a great place to be uh, but I do much prefer the home shirt now thankfully for Serbia fans the away shirt is much better here than the home and it is essentially just because of this cuff pattern this sleeve cuff uh, design but I do like it and just simple things like having that little pop of red to contrast is good I quite like this shade of blue as well uh, which we have for the secondary color so there's not too much other than those cuffs but honestly it's amazing what a good cuff pattern can do uh, and when we look here at our tier list I don't actually mind putting this shirt uh, I think maybe just above Ukraine so not a bad position there at all one of the better Puma shirts in fact is that the best Puma shirt so far uh, it is which probably speaks more to the fact that I don't think Puma are doing that well this year but nonetheless Serbia away uh, I'm taking this uh, every day of the week over the home which is my least favorite so far on the tournament what about Romania the first uh, Romania shirt we have uh, again we're with Homer the Spanish brand lots of nice details from the flag uh, design of the cuffs to this pattern of the body which you don't really see here on this uh, on this render but it is there and it does look good though this collar isn't my favorite style it's better than some of the kits uh, we've seen known to be the England collar that we just talked about so there are some nice elements here in fact so nice that I think I'd be comfortable putting this shirt uh, in the beta now we come to Georgia and I really like uh, Macron's kits for Georgia this year this is probably my favorite of the bunch I think this is actually sneakily one of the better kits of the tournament we really are crying out for the number here in the middle but ultimately I like this combination of the subliminal uh, central stripe but also the little crosses here and it goes I believe on the back of the kit as well uh, it's a really nice way to add interest to what would otherwise be quite a plain base and I don't mind that at all I think it really does actually work quite well and this uh, usage of the red just to highlight the simple collar of the crew neck and the federation crest which looks really great I don't recognize this I don't know if this is recently rebranded or maybe I've just not seen Georgia play football for a little while but nonetheless like the combination and I think it's really strong I think Macron actually have done a really good job um, black kits often do work well in fact I think this one deserves a spot in the A tier and we'll go towards the bottom of the A tier, but nonetheless, a great position for Georgia there. Macron are doing some great work. They really are. So great to see them represented at the Euros. They certainly deserve it. And I really like that kit for Georgia. 
What about the Italy home shirt? So again, we've got that subliminal pattern. Best thing about this kit is the three stripes in the flag color, such an obvious thing. Everyone was crying out for it. Everyone was basically willing it into existence when the Adidas deal was announced, but it did happen. And again, this is offering something different to the away. I do like the combination. I think this is more of a B tier uh, shirt for me though. I think I like it somewhere in the middle there. It's such a simple thing to have the three stripes in the color. Uh, colors of the flag but it works so well but uh the tier list is looking nice pretty balanced the b tier is certainly a shut up there which is good after the start we had now we come to the scotland away shirt now this color combination is quite fresh it's kind of of the vibe of something like the spain away shirt i don't think i like this color combo quite as much actually and when i look at this combination the purple feels quite fitted for Scotland. Purple has been a colour which Scotland have used before to good effect. But this combination with the uh, the light blue or green, I'm not sure, it almost looks kind of mint. I'm not sure on the final colour, but it's not really the strongest uh, combination. It's not my favourite colour combo. Now it's good to see, again, strong elements of the Adidas template coming through here. Now we have the pattern on the side section, which again is just so good. I cannot speak highly enough about the Adidas template I think it is so strong uh, but this is actually one of the weaker Adidas shirts for me so again it's a bit similar to the home show really it's got bespoke elements which I like but I would actually put this one just above the home so kind of propping up the B tier but that's not the worst place to be and uh, Scotland fans won't mind because of course they are going to be having a great time uh, over in Germany and speaking of Germany we have the Germany home one of the most talked about shirts of the year and for good reason this is a fantastic design from adidas i'm not always the biggest fan of gradients but i think this kind of gradient that we've got on the sleeves is really effective it's really well executed and this looks great as well in the long sleeve version i'm sure many of you have seen pictures um we actually get a bit more of the color of the flags a bit more of that pattern further down the sleeves which is great um, so this is definitely one of the better kits of the tournament it's not one of my personal favorites. So I think when we're looking at this tier list, it doesn't quite crack into the S tier. I think I would actually put it below the franchise, which is certainly not a bad place to be. Going to Denmark, very similar kit to the away, but the collar of course has been replaced this time uh, with a simple crew neck. And I don't mind it, it does match the cuffs quite well. Uh, I like it kind of in between here. So that is Denmark uh, on the board there. Uh, in the beta, the top of the beta and the middle of the beta, strong combination from Hummel. We're back with Macron again, this time for Albania. And uh, these kits got a bit of buzz online. In fact, they actually came top of a community poll that was run recently on, uh, on Twitter. So that was really cool to see. This subliminal pattern, of course, lifted from the crest is a small touch, but it does work. And the collar is largely quite successful. I'm not as high on this as other people, and again, it won that community poll, but for me, this is actually not one of the better kits and the better kit combos of the year. Uh, I'll take the home a bit over the away. Both are pretty strong, but I think there are some better patterns. I think uh, the home, I don't mind it in between those two Scotland shirts, and the away land in something more like, uh, let's take it just below Hungary. So there we have Albania on the board. Back with Romania, I really like this home shirt. In fact, this one, uh, I think it is exactly the same as the uh, as the away, but I really do think this is more successful. In fact, uh, looking at our tier list, oh, I think this easily deserves a spot in the A tier. Gonna keep it just below Georgia, but it's great to see uh, Homer, and we've got Matcon again as well there. In the A tier, great stuff, love the cuffs, and um, good to see that flash of yellow that we have with the Ukraine shirt. We come to the Portugal way, and anyone who saw my leaks video will probably know where I'm going with this one. I am not a fan of this. I think the idea is S tier easily, but the execution is much, much lower. The end result of this pattern to me really does not do the source of inspiration justice. So I think this is probably gonna be my most controversial take, and I would actually say it's probably below England's home. So we are talking just the bottom of the seat. It really isn't a strong look. Um, whether it's from distance or up close, I don't think the shirt looks good. I don't think the pattern looks good at all. It feels very washed out. 
I mentioned the kind of almost bacteria looking kind of petri dish looking design that's kind of what it reminds you of I don't think it looks good at all I'd much prefer a much more crisp pattern that does those kind of intricate uh, tile patterns justice not strong but you know there are worse kits I'm not going to be too harsh on it but uh, certainly one of my most controversial takes my hottest takes I think will keep Portugal away in the C tip coming to the Georgia home I much prefer the black shirt uh, the away shirt but this is still strong it's the same pattern essentially uh, again we really need this number don't we on these particular shirts the cross pattern is successful though I do think it is actually pretty reasonable uh, and I like it kind of somewhere between the C and B tier and that is a decent position in the B tier for Georgia now Germany away uh, again, if you saw the leaks video, the leaks tier list, you'll know because some of my thinking here. This one is giving uh, goalkeeper kits perhaps more than any other design uh, of the tournament. I actually think this pattern is strong, but if we saw it with a better colorway, it would just be great. I don't think this color combination is good at all. Um, it is certainly one of the more daring, and we've not really had a pink shirt. In fact, we haven't had a pink shirt so far. But ultimately, I think this is actually quite, quite weak. Now, the question is, how low do we go? I'm actually going to put it, guys, in the D tier. It's a real shame because Adidas have been so, so good. But I honestly think this colorway is just bad. I really don't think it looks good at all. It's a really good like design in terms of the, the idea. But I don't like the finished color choices. Coming to Austria way. A disappointed shirt here, um, less successful than the similar uh, Switzerland away. I think this one kind of does the same approach but worse. And again, the Puma templates just aren't landing well, guys. In fact, I think we'll stick them just uh, above Slovakia here. But the final few kits now, we have Portugal's home. Sadly, this one really is lacking in interesting details. And it's a shame, I think it makes sense that they've gone for quite a understated home shirt given the relative craziness of the away. Now, I certainly like this over the away, in fact I'd go pretty high in the C tier. Uh, so not exactly a great position, I'd take it just below hungry I think. But we're ending on a high note with these two kits here. We have the England away firstly. This one has really risen in my personal rankings over the weeks since release. Probably the most daring color combination we've seen. Uh, but this is much more successful than something like the Germany away. For me, this one certainly lands better. Ultimately, I think this is a much more attractive combination. I do like the base color uh, and this secondary color. I believe it's called Sesame or maybe I'm just making that up. Uh, but obviously, I do think this combination is interesting. I think this shirt looks quite good. It's a good contrast to the home. Again, I said it before, but when you have a relatively plain home shirt, it gives you license to do something interesting. Ultimately, I'm not going to get too carried away with this one. And actually, when we look at our tier list here, I think it's definitely a B tier shirt. Now, our B tier is so full, I might just bump up Denmark uh, to the A tier. And then it gives us a bit of space. And I would probably say England lands. How far are we going? I think we'll go just below Italy here. So almost in the middle of our tier list. Anytime you have a shirt like this, where the design is quite unusual, it means that anything that happens in the kit, good or bad, uh, has a greater chance of being remembered. So that maybe bodes well or badly, depending on how well you think England will do at the Euros. And finally, we come to, I'm just going to say, guys, my favourite shirt of Euro 2024. We talked previously about the retro nature of the home shirt, how the France home shirt Pay tribute in the colours and the oversized crest and it's a similar story here with the crest but I love this asymmetric pinstripe design and you also see the pinstripes run through to the shorts we're not ranking the shorts for this tier list today but these are probably my favourite shorts of the tournament as well the France away shorts but I think this is such a successful effort from Nike again tapping into those old kits but doing it in quite a creative way but I almost wonder what it would look like without those contrasting column cuffs maybe it wouldn't look as good Ultimately, I still love the shirt. And I do think, again, having this half and half look, constructed the pinstripes, is strong. It's a wonderful design. It's a very international design, but I think it is going to go right to the top. So we end 
with an absolute banger. I'm such a big fan of the France away. And look at this, guys. I mean, these three teams here, France, Belgium, and the Netherlands, each of those three uh, represented in both the S and A tiers. So a heavyweight trio. And if we were to give, you know, gold, silver, and bronze medals, I think France would take it for me, followed by Belgium and then the Netherlands. But it is a great, great combination. And that is our tier list. So let's just take it in now as we finish the video. And it's been a long one. Well over, well, recording time well over an hour. I want to edit this, it might be under, I don't know. It depends how much waffling I did. But nonetheless, uh, that is our list. We just about fit every shirt in. We had to do a bit of rejigging at the end, but that is our tier list. What do you think, guys? Where have I gone wrong? What shirt have I completely overrated? Maybe you absolutely hate the France away. What shirt have I missed out? Are you a big fan of the Germany shirt or the Portugal shirt that I've ranked so low? I'd love to hear in the comments. Let me know. Uh, how your personal tier list would shake up. I'm hoping I'll be able to do a couple more videos. We'll probably try and do a video during the tournament, maybe reacting to some of the stories we get, some of the matches we see. Uh, and then we'll do a bit of a wrap-up show as well, a bit of a wrap-up episode. But again, that will do it for today. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoy it. Thank you so, so much. I'll see you very soon for another one. Take care and all the best.